Well, Pnaun Dyer, I know that we've got uh, some Welsh folk here and uh, that's good afternoon. And uh, Croeso, that's welcome. Um, uh, I love the title Celtic Pioneer. I've never been called that, but I'm thinking of appropriating it. So um, thanks very much that, for that, James. Um, perhaps if we do go to the uh, first uh, of the slides, you can see our patch. Can you all see that, yeah? Fantastic. Um, uh, four years ago, um, myself and my husband moved uh, to the North Wales coast from Liverpool. So I am a Welsh scouser. Um, you can probably tell from my accent. Um, and we moved from the urban. Uh, so we had been in Liverpool for uh, over, over 20 years. It's where I originally come from. Um, but uh, my family are Welsh and uh, we came back to Roots four years ago. So uh, you can see the closeness to, to the Northwest there. Um, it might be an area that you know uh, well yourself. Uh, it's certainly uh, aspirational uh, for a number of folk from the big conurbations to come and retire here. It's known uh, as the Costa Geriatrica um, uh, here locally. Um, but if we go to, um, to the next slide, Jane, this is what I want to talk about today. In contrast, this is our pilgrim church. It has no congregation. It is 900 feet um, above the nearest village, which is really a hamlet. It's 12th century and it has a 6th century holy well next to it. It's called Llangolunin. Strangely, in its remoteness, it is our most public building. It's open all the time. And it attracts to it a really diverse crowd. If you go on YouTube or anything, you will find all kinds of people, walkers and all kinds of people who find their way there. My husband, the night before he was installed, decided to sleep there the night before because he felt a thinness of place there. And that because it didn't have a congregation, actually this was a place for a fresh start. Next slide. So, I would say one of the things we've learned is that having a fresh start, having no congregation in a very special place can be a gift. Because here, um, what we started doing was a once a month service. And um, in my business career before, I would have said, take a look at what you've got and what is a USP? What is your unique selling point? Here, it's kind of ug, really. Um, we're using God's gifts. <laughs> what, what is the place that people are naturally drawn to? It doesn't actually have to be a building. This is the spot that people get drawn to. So this is dawn on Easter Sunday morning, which is high above the hills and an astonishingly atmospheric spot. Sangalun in itself has got no electricity or heating. It's special and therefore this is the place that we feel that would get the most diverse group of people to it. Next slide. So after uniqueness I would say it's about accessibility. And that might be a bit of a peculiar thing to say when it is hilltop, because no, you can't get to it um, if you um, have a, a mobility problem. But we have to do accessibility in a different way. We offer a once a month pilgrim walk, which is about an hour and a half over the hilltops. You can get there by car, but 
um, but you still need a 10 minute walk at the end. And some people were very fearful because um, uh, it's single track with no um, turning points at the end. The accessibility is about attitude and it's about non-denominational attitude. We call the once a month event here Celtic prayer and praise. So that what the kind of language we use is deliberately non-denominational. So it wears the church in Wales badge, if you like, very, very lightly. Whatever we do there, we always use the language of many paths that have come here. And we always say that, um, that we don't necessarily take for granted where people are on their journeys of faith. So next slide. It takes a huge amount of effort to get to Tangalun. And therefore, the sense of anticipation is unbelievable. <laughs> it is palpable. The Holy Spirit is, is it's, it's an extraordinary sense because it takes such an effort. And people um, have got um, a huge draw to the space. We seem to be um, scratching where people itch. And uh, our average attendance up there last year uh, was 57 people, which for 900 feet above the nearest village is, I think, is extraordinary. Um, sometimes uh, it's nearer 70 and we can't get everybody in. It's diverse. 80% of the folk, I would say, uh, would go to another church but 20% wouldn't go anywhere else at all and would probably place yoga or something like that in the center of their spirituality. That group of people, fascinating, are now asking for things like, could we, Errol, do like yoga Compline? That's really interesting, intriguing. And some of that has started through COVID via Zoom, separate conversation. So lastly, because I'm very aware of the time, and this is a, a real skip and a jump through this, is last slide, James. Um, uh, the, this is uh, the, one of the paths up to Thangalunin, is we found Thangalunin to be an agent of change, an agent of transformation that has affected our ministry and has had a, an impact wider than just Langalunin. It's it, it, what we say in our language here is that you don't sit in anybody else's seat because the space is everybody's, because it was nobody's. That's been profound. It's been transformative in terms of the relationships that are ecumenical and no ecumenical committee has been formed. It just is. It's organic. It doesn't need a committee. Celtic prayer and praise has allowed um, creativity, authenticity, spaciousness, reflection, fewer words, songs, chants that nobody knew before and just learn on the spot, outdoor worship, separate conversation, but mountain pilgrims, great link with them in Cumbria. This has been the kind of agent of transformation that has been taking something authentic and ancient, but putting a totally contemporary and yet non-cheesy, <laughs> Uh, non-contrived, authentic and bilingual way of worship. I think I will leave it there.